Hey everyone, welcome back to Chem Talk. In today's video, we will be covering the relative stability of alkene isomers. Toward the end, you will begin to understand why different stereoisomers of alkenes are more important to drug synthesis. To start off, let's talk about how the relative stability of alkenes is differentiated. Alkene stability is a measure of the energy released by its hydrogenation. This hydrogenation is the simple re addition reaction of H2 gas in the presence of a metal catalyst to create a saturated hydrocarbon, or alkane, that you may be familiar with. Something important to note is that the more energy released via this hydrogenation, or the more negative the number, the more unstable the alkene reagent was prior to the reaction, or the more potential energy that was within its bonds. So in short, we will be using enthalpies of hydrogenation, or delta H of hydrogenation, to be determining how stable or unstable two alkene isomers are to one another. Now, how do you determine if one alkene is more stable than another? Let's look at the following alkenes. One important thing to note is that these are constitutional isomers of one another, so they have the same molecular formula, but different atom-to-atom -atom connectivity. These are pentene isomers. As you can see, the enthalpy of hydrogenation is the lowest in 2-methyl-2-butene and the highest in 1-pentene. This is due to the amount of alkyl substituents located on the double bond. Fewer alkyl substituents on the double bond leads to a higher enthalpy of hydrogenation, whereas more alkyl substituents on the double bond leads to a lower enthalpy of hydrogenation and thus a more stable pentene constitutional isomer. So why do more alkyl substituents on double bonds yield more stable alkenes? This can mainly be attributed to two factors, hyperconjugation and bond strength. Hyperconjugation is the overlapping of parallel unhybridized p orbitals and sigma bonds that are adjacent to them. In the instance of alkenes, this is the overlap of the unhybridized p orbital of the carbon-carbon double bond and the surrounding parallel carbon-hydrogen sigma bonds in alkyl groups. The overlapping of these orbitals results in greater electron delocalization, meaning that the electron or charge is spread out over a greater atomic distance, thus stabilizing the molecule. The greater the number of alkyl substituents around the double bond, the more delocalization of charge can occur because there are a greater number of sigma bonds adjacent to the double bond. The second factor that alkyl substituents bring into play is bond strength. The carbons of the alkene double bond are sp2 hybridized. Carbons within alkyl, alkyl groups are sp3 hybridized. Without getting into the major specifics, greater s character in hybridized orbitals means that the electrons are able to reside closer to the nucleus. As a result, the bonds formed by orbitals with greater S character are shorter. Therefore, a sigma bond between an sp2 hybridized carbon and an sp3 hybridized carbon would be stronger than an sp3 sp3 bond due to sp2 hybridized orbitals having greater S character, and thus the molecule would be more stable. Revisiting the constitutional isomers of pentene we saw before, now you can understand why 2-methyl-2-butene is more stable than 1-pentene. There are three alkyl substituents adjacent to the double bond of 2-methyl-2-butene and only one in 1-pentene. Aside from alkene constitutional isomers, stereoisomers also have differing relative stabilities. You're probably familiar with cis and trans stereoisomers of alkenes. However, this naming is only applicable when there are two identical groups bonded to the carbons of the alkene double bond, like in trans-2-butene and cis-2-butene, where two methyl groups are bonded to the alkene double bond. E and Z are more versatile and can be used in a greater variety of settings. E and Z represent entgegen, meaning opposed, since the higher priority groups are on opposite sides of the double bond, and zusamen, meaning together, since the higher priority groups are together on the same side of the double bond. These are German words that are used to name the different stereoisomers of alkenes when there are two or more non-hydrogen substituents bonded to the carbons of the double bond. In order to determine the priority of substitu substituents, and if alkenes are E or Z stereoisomers, you can use the kahn engold prelog rules. If you need a refresher on this, visit the ChemTalk website for more. 
Let's look at the enthalpies of hydrogenation of trans and cis 2 butene. Trans 2 butene has an enthalpy of hydrogenation of around negative 115.5 kilojoules per mole, whereas cis 2 butene has an enthalpy of hydrogenation of roughly negative 119.7 kilojoules per mole. Why exactly is there a 4.2 kilojoule per mole difference between the two stereoisomers when the location of the double bond is identical? It can't be due to the bond strength or more alkyl substituents at the double bond because both molecules are identical in those aspects too. In the instance of E and Z, as well as in cis and trans stereoisomers, the difference in enthalpies of hydrogenation is actually due to something called steric strain. Steric strain is caused by electronic repulsions of two bulky substituents in close proximity, but not directly bonded to one another. With cis-2-butene, the two methyl groups are forced to remain on the same side of the double bond because the pi bond does not allow for free rotation of the molecule. So the electrons within two methyl groups, which in reality branch out like this, begin to repel one another, causing the potential energy of cis-2-butene to increase. A greater potential energy corresponds to a more unstable molecule, and thus more energy is released by the hydrogenation of the molecule. In trans-2-butene, the two methyl groups are on opposite sides of the double bond, so the steric strain of the interaction of the two methyl groups is not present. If you crunch the relatively easy numbers, you can see that the steric strain caused by the interaction of the two methyl groups in cis-2-butene is around 4.2 kilojoules. So in general, when comparing E and Z stereoisomers or cis and trans stereoisomers, E and trans stereoisomers will be more stable than Z or cis stereoisomers due to less steric strain. E and Z isomer stability can actually be vital for professionals in the pharmaceutical industry, believe it or not. As we saw earlier, Z isomers are typically less stable due to electric repulsions of the larger groups bonded to the same side of the double bond. In turn, Z stereoisomer reagents may react slightly faster than their E counterparts because of a greater potential energy. The activation energy is slightly lower and the reagent is closer in energy to the energy of its transition state. However, it's important to understand that in some regiospecific or stereospecific reactions, you won't get the same products with cis, cis or trans alkene reagents. So both of these factors have to be taken into account when synthesizing drugs. E and Z stereoisomers also have different physical properties, which can lead to some surprising and drastic differences in the conditions they can treat. All transretinoic acid, otherwise known as uh, tretinoin, is used to treat acne, while cis-retinoic acid, known as isotretinoin, has been documented as a strong cancer therapeutic as well as a treatment for acne. That's crazy. In all, let's summarize what we went over in the video. Alkene constitutional isomers are more stable if they contain more alkyl sub substitution around the double bond. This is due to increased hyperconjugation from adjacent sigma bonds to the carbon-carbon double bond and because of increased bond strength from greater S character of hybridized orbitals. Alkene stereoisomers are more stable in the E configuration versus Z configuration and in the trans configuration versus the cis configuration due to fewer electronic repulsions in bulky high priority groups, decreasing the steric strain within the molecule. That's all we have time for today. Thank you for tuning into this video to learn about the relative stability of alkene isomers. For more practice in chemistry fun, please visit www.chemistrytalk.org. Thank you.